through. God is in the blessing business and he is able to hear our cry. We worship the Lord and we prepare our hearts to receive the word of God this morning from my pastor. Hallelujah. Don't sit there, but even open up your hearts and let my Jesus in because he'll make your way brighter and your burdens lighter. Open up your hearts and let my Jesus in. Hear ye, hear ye the man of God for the hour. Amen. For the people of God. Bishop Vaughn McCray Sr. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. We greet you in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many happy because Jesus is their king? How many is happy because Jesus is your king? Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. The songwriter said, this is the day the Lord has made, and I will rejoice. Anybody rejoice with me today? And I'm going to be glad about it. Oh, thank you, Jesus Christ. Greet you all in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're grateful unto him because he's blessed us to be among the land of the living one more time. Because if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be? Oh, praise the Lord. I thank God and do honor him today. Thank him for his gift of humanity and the person of his son, Jesus Christ, who he sent into the world to take on the sins of mankind, to die on the cross and shed his blood so that we could be saved. What kind of love is this that a man will lay down his life for his brethren? We're glad to be here today. We honor all of you in the name of Jesus. Thank God for our clergy. Praise the Lord. We thank God for their assistance in the ministry. Along with our deacons, we are grateful to the missionaries, the mothers. Praise the Lord, especially our visitors. Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Glad you came to be with us today. Praise the Lord. To our musicians, to our ushers, to everyone in the house, we thank God to be here. We know it's holiday season and people are traveling and people are planning. But I want to be in the house of the Lord today. And I see that you did as well. So we're grateful unto the Lord for his loving kindness and his tender mercies towards us. Again, we're so glad to see Deacon George Hand, Mother Barbara Chester Hand back. Amen. In the house, also for Mother Ruth McFadden. Praise the Lord. I thank God for her. And also there's another brother here this morning. I believe his name is Brother Ronald Mosley. Praise the Lord. Good to see him. Praise the Lord. Thank God for him being here today in the name of Jesus Christ. We will be serving communion today. It's first Sunday. We're going to serve communion for whoever's here to take it. I want you to pray. I received a, a message from uh, Brother Arthur Taylor, who's in the hospital, in ICU. And also, I want you to pray much for the Quarles family from Plainfield. I grew up in Plainfield with them. This Today, the Lord transitioned. Uh, Mother Lois Qualls took her home to be with the Lord. I want you to pray for the family. They lost one sister a month or so ago, and now another sister. But thank God she's saved. Praise the Lord. Thank, that's what makes all the difference. When you're saved, you just transition. You just go to sleep in Jesus Christ. I want you to pray much for them. And also I want you to pray for Sister Martina Payne. She has some serious medical challenges. And I need you to pray for her. Praise the Lord. You don't have to know what it is. Just pray for her. The Lord knows. Ask the Lord to touch her body. And also pray for Marquita, her daughter, in the name of Jesus. Remember me. Praise the Lord. Pray much for Mother McCray. Amen. She's anticipating surgery in November. Pray the Lord sustain her. Praise God. And pray for yourself. Praise the Lord. Pray for your community. Pray for your co-workers, your neighbors. Remember the children that are going back to school in a little couple of days. Praise the Lord. Those that went to college or in college. But pray for the children as they go to and from school. That the Lord will watch over them and bless them. 
Bless you now in Jesus' name. I want you to turn with me to the Old Testament book of Isaiah chapter number 38. Isaiah the 38th chapter and I, from verse 1 to verse number 8. Praise the Lord. And will you stand to your feet? That's Isaiah chapter 38. And I will read in your hearing from verse 1 to verse number 8. When you have it, will you say amen? In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for you shall die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face towards the wall and prayed unto the Lord and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how have I walked before you in truth and with a perfect heart? And I have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Hezekiah, I'm sorry, praise the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears, Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years, and I will deliver you and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city, and this shall be a sign unto you from the Lord, that the Lord will do this thing he hath spoken. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees which is gone down in the sundown, of Ahaz, 10 degrees backwards. So the sun returned 10 degrees by which degrees it was gone down. Let the church say amen. amen. You may be seated. I want to speak to you from the subject from a death sentence to an extended life. From a death sentence unto an extended life. The Lord never ceases to cause me to stand in awe of him, for he is a great God. When it comes to God's ability, when it comes to the Lord's might, when it comes to his power, he is an amazing God. Full capabilities of, can do anything. Praise the Lord. He's so great that he's beyond our comprehension. We can only see God so far, but there is so much further of his power for us to see. The Lord's potential is unlimited. He has no limitations to which he must comply. No set boundaries. There is nothing that he is unable to perform. God has no boundaries. He has no limits. All things are possible to him. All things are achievable. For he is the sovereign God. God has no things that tell him that's far enough. And you can't go any further. God has the limit of himself. He who can do all things. Oh, praise the Lord. He has unlimited authority. He has unlimited power. He has unlimited resources. Don't ever believe that your situation or your circumstance cannot change. Man can't do it, but oh, hallelujah, God is able to do it for you. The word of God is true. The word of God is certain. Whatever the Lord says, it's got to come to pass. The word of God is dependable. Whatever the Lord says, whatever the Lord 
proclaims it must come to pass. It has to come to pass. It must happen exactly as the Lord has spoken it. The power of the word of God to bring into existence whatever, praise the Lord, he declares is an expression of his essence. It is an expression of his character and of his omnipotence. Omnipotence means you have all the power. It isn't shared with anyone else. You alone possess that capability. And when it comes to the Lord, the Lord can do anything. I got one yes, sir. I say, when it comes to the Lord, the Lord can do anything. Do you believe it? Am I making it up? No, sir. God can do anything. Oh, praise the Lord. There exist people in the world who possess limited power. They rule over certain aspects of life, over certain nations, over certain countries. But their power is limited. Oh, praise the Lord. They have a limited authority. They have a limited resources. There is not one leader in the world that can make rain or stop the rain. <laughs> there is no leader in the world that has power over nature because they didn't create nature. There is only one God that has that kind of power and his name is Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And the word was manifest and became flesh. It says all things were made by him. And without him, there wasn't anything made that was made. Now, that's a lot of power, isn't it? Well, thank you, Jesus Christ. Their authority is restricted. It can only go so far. Their ability to administer is confined to the area which they rule over. Praise the Lord. Putin has no more power. Praise the Lord over America. He rules Russia. Praise the Lord. He rules in those areas. He sent his army to fight, back, uh, fight against the civilians to keep a dictator in power. But when it comes to Jesus Christ, he has all the power in heaven and in earth. Praise the Lord. Hey, thank you, Jesus Christ. They're human potentates. They're human monarchs. And rulers believe they have full control over the nations that they supposedly serve. But the lesson that every leader needs to learn and to understand that God is above all. I say God is above all. Praise the Lord. Don't limit your life. Don't cause your mind to have anxiety believing that God can't change things. If God can't change it, it can't be changed. But God can do it. Oh, praise the Lord. He ha God has the authority over all of his creation. He is Lord over the visible, what you see, and he's Lord over the invisible, the spirit world, which you cannot see. He's the sovereign God. He is the only potentate, unlimited in power, unlimited in authority, unlimited in resources. Listen to what Paul writes to Timothy to encourage him in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 15 and 16. He is the one who has immortality, who dwells in the light, which no man can approach, which no man can see or has seen. He is the only potentate. He is king of kings and lord of lords. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Whatever he has created, he has power over. That's why you shouldn't fear the devil. Praise the Lord. The devil didn't just get here by himself. He was created by God. And if the Lord created him, he's under the Lord's control. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Didn't you know that? You're blaming the devil. You're blaming the devil. You're blaming the devil. 
And all the devil is doing is working the way the Lord wants him to work. He can't just do what he wants to do. Praise the Lord. He has to get permission from the Lord. And if the Lord says no, then the devil got to go pout somewhere. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, who in their right mind wouldn't want to serve a God like this? A God that can change my circumstance, can change my status. Hallelujah. That can do the impossible. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? He is not a weak God. He's a powerful God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Tell me who wouldn't serve a God that could change their life completely. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Look at yourself. Look at, look at yourself. Praise the Lord. Hasn't the Lord showed his power in your life? Praise the Lord. We were wretches undone. We were sinners and the Lord sanctified us. Filled us with the Holy Ghost. Only God could do that. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? The answer to that question is a whole lot of people who don't realize that the solution to their problem is only a call away. Many men and women who don't know Jesus Christ, they don't know he's the answer to a better life, to a happier life, to a less stressful life. They don't know that Jesus can turn their life around. That's why they need to hear your testimony. They need you to stop for a minute, praise the Lord, go back 20, 30 years, and tell them where the Lord brought you from. Tell him how he delivered you. Tell him how he made the devil turn you loose. Well, thank you, Jesus. The world is full of countless millions of people trying to face life alone. They are void of the knowledge of God. They are void of the understanding. They are void of the awareness that God is right there waiting for them to cry out to him, to call on his name. Praise the Lord, who can deliver them from a life of darkness and depression and sickness and can overshadow them with his love. They don't know that. Many people that are, have, don't have an understanding about this wonderful Savior and what Jesus Christ is capable of doing in their lives. I'm so glad the Lord gave me an opportunity to serve him. Oh, praise, do you ever thank God just for the opportunity to approach the throne of grace? Do you ever thank God for the opportunity just to be in the kingdom of God? Praise the Lord to be thankful what the Lord have done. I'm so glad that Jesus Christ didn't allow me to stay blinded. In, but he opened up my eyes to his amazing grace. So he allowed his light to shine in my dark life. And I say I'm glad. I don't know about you, but I'm glad the Lord spared my life. I'm glad the Lord had pity on me. And brought me into his kingdom and saved my soul when he filled me with the gift of the Holy Ghost. So, yes, sir, I'm glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. The reason why I'm happy today and every day, because I wasn't always in Jesus Christ. So, I used to be afraid of my future, right? I used to be worried about how my life was going to turn out. I tried to go through life with the appearance that everything was all right. It looked all right on the outside. But oh, on the inside, I was depressed. I was frightened. I had anxiety. I was unhappy. But one day I met a man named Jesus. And he changed all of that. I tell you, Jesus can do anything. Uh, Jesus can deliver you, can save you, can heal your body. Yep. Jesus can open up a door, send you a blessing. Oh, yes, he can. 
help. I knew that I needed help. I knew that I didn't want to live the rest of my life like that. I didn't want to stay in that condition. But I didn't have the power, praise the Lord, to deliver myself. Oh, but when I called on the name of Jesus, when I said, Jesus, I need you to help me. Jesus, I need you to save me. Thank God he heard my cry. And the Lord delivered me. Oh, praise the Lord, even when I was in sin. I could hear the Lord say to me, if you let me, if you allow me, I'll fix your life. If you live for me, I'll turn things around. But I was young and I was hard-headed and I was stubborn and I thought that if I didn't respond, his voice would go away. Yep. Well, oh, praise the Lord, but who knows when the Lord is talking to you, he just turn up the value. Yep. Well, praise God, the Lord's last ultimatum to me was if you die right now, where do you think you're going to spend eternity? Yep. And I knew I was a chief sinner. I knew if I was to die, I was going to hell. Praise the Lord in the fast lane. Yep. But I didn't want to go to hell. I wanted to go to heaven. So I had to change my ways. I had to submit and humble myself unto the Lord my God. Praise the Lord. I had heard enough. I broke down and said to the Lord, if you rescue me, I'll serve you all the days of my life. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. I know Jesus will turn things around. Yes, sir, I know he will not only turn things around, but he'll turn people around. He'll turn conditions around. Oh, yes, he will. God's word governs everything which he has made. Everything is subject to the will of God. We make great Boasts about me, mine, and I. Yep. But God is in control. Yep. Did you hear what I say? Yep. He functions in every aspect of our lives. Yep. We make great boasts and swelling words. Yep. But everything happens according to the will of God. Yep. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yep. Uh, the scripture I read to you in Isaiah 38 chapter, King Hezekiah ascended to the throne as the king of Judah at the age of 25. Immediately he recognized Judah's sinfulness and their rebellion against the commandments of God. The, the people were corrupt. The, the people were abominable. The, they had left off from following Jehovah. The, they had established a religious system the, that worshipped and served other gods. So, the gods of the Canaanites. So, they had set up an open air worship service so, called the Grove, so, where they would offer sacrifices, so, not to Jehovah, so, but offered sacrifice to the false gods, so, to Astareth, so, to Baal and Moloch. So, they set up shrines and icons. So, and the Lord was not pleased so, when Hezekiah came to power so, he destroyed the high places so, and broke down the grove so, tore up the images so, and cut down the high places so, Hezekiah had a different heart so, from the kings before him the, the children of Judah 
to burn incense to the brass serpent of Moses that they made in the wilderness. It seems as though some people will worship anything but God. But I'll take Jesus for mine. You can have the whole wide world. You can worship what you want to. You can worship your job. You can worship a sports team. But I'll take Jesus. I'll take him for mine. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Because the Lord been good to me. Uh, I want to take a survey today. Who here knows that Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to you? Who here knows that if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, you would have collapsed a long time ago. If you know he's been good to you, shout hallelujah. If you know he's been good to you, tell the Lord thank you. If you know Jesus have blessed your life, tell him glory. Oh, praise the Lord. Hezekiah set up reforms. The temple was shut down and needed repairs. He got the Levites, made repairs to the temple. The priest got in and cleansed the temple and sanctified it as the house of the law. He followed his commandments. Hezekiah was different. He wasn't like others who made swelling words. I love the law, but Hezekiah, his heart cleaved unto the law. He held on tight and wouldn't let go. Thank you, Jesus. He didn't deviate. He didn't make an excuse, but he's told the lie and served the Lord with all his heart, with all his mind. He was blessed in all things. My former pastor, Bishop Michael C. Graham, he told me when you're faithful to the Lord, the Lord owes you and the Lord won't let you have a day. But the Lord will bless your life. Thank you, Jesus. Any blessed people on the corner of 52nd and Race. Any blessed people in this house. I'm blessed. Coming in. I'm blessed. Going out. Blessed in the city. Blessed in the field. The Lord. I say the Lord. He been good. He brought me from a mighty long way. With tender hands. He lifted me out of my mess. Put joy in my soul. Clapping in my hands, dancing in my feet, and I love him. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. He delivered. He delivered. He delivered. He delivered my poor soul. Hallelujah. The text reads, praise the Lord, Hezekiah became sick unto death. Hallelujah. That means he was going to certainly die. Praise the Lord. And the Lord sent a message to Hezekiah. Praise the Lord. By the mouth of his prophet Isaiah. The message was simple. Hezekiah, get your administration in order because you're going to die. Get your business straight. Write out your will. 
name your successors, <laughs> all your heirs, because you will die and not live. Oh, praise the Lord. Can you imagine receiving that kind of message? The first thing you want to know, how long I got? Because he just told him he was sick unto death. And this sickness, he was going to die. He was not going to recover. Oh, praise the Lord. And think about it. This message is not from his haters. It's not from people who are against him and they prophesying something. But this word come, came straight from the Lord. Praise. If I got a message like that, I might have a heart attack on the spot. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hezekiah hears this proclamation from Isaiah. He turns his face to the wall because he's sick. He's sick. He turns his face to the wall and prayed and he starts talking to the Lord. See, we spend too much time on Facebook. We spend too much time on the phone. We spend too much time looking at the TV. But we should spend more time talking to the Lord. And Hezekiah says to the Lord, Lord, remember me. I've been living saved. I walked before you in truth. I had a perfect heart and I did good in your sight. I turned the nation around. And then he just broke down and wept uncontrollably. Oh, thank you, Jesus. His prayer and his tears was all that he had. If you ever get to a point in life you think can nothing change, hold on to your prayer. Bring your tears before the Lord and weep before him. Oh, hallelujah. That'll get a response from God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. All I got is my brokenness. All I have is my sickness. All I have is my heart that's heavy. And you've given me a death sentence. Hallelujah. Isaiah delivered the message of death to Hezekiah. And left the king's chamber. He started to leave the palace. When another message came. From the Lord. The Lord said Isaiah. Turn around. Hallelujah. God can turn things around. Hallelujah. Turn around Isaiah. I got another message I want you to deliver to Ezekiel, Hezekiah. Tell him I heard his prayer. Tell him I seen his tears. Tell him I heard his prayer. Tell him I've seen his tears. Tell him I heard what he said. I saw his heart broken. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Tell him I'm going to add 15 years to his life. Oh, hallelujah. Hezekiah went from having a death sentence being issued by the great warden God to the Lord turning it around and extending his life. That's why I'm saying to you, God can do anything. Is his prerogative. He is the sovereign God. Don't tell me because a situation looks hopeless and you don't know how it's going to turn out. I'm going to hold on to faith. I'm going to hold on to faith. I'm going to know he's Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord that heal. He's Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provide. He's Jehovah Siskanu. He's God. And when you're God, you can do anything. People look at me and ask me why I act the way I do. Praise the Lord because I know what God can do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I want you to listen to this. Praise the Lord. Hezekiah 
Isaiah said to Hezekiah, now Hezekiah said to Isaiah, no, Isaiah said to Hezekiah, now, so that you will believe that God is able to do that. What do you prefer? That the sun dial go forward 10 degrees? Or do you want it to go backwards 10 degrees? And Hezekiah thought about it and said, look, it's not hard for it to go forward. It's going to go forward anyway. He said, but I want the sundown to go backwards. And Isaiah said, okay. Now, you know, <laughs> the earth is on a 23 degree axis. It's rotating. At the same time, it's going around the sun. In order for the sun now to go back 10 degrees, the Lord has to stop the spinning of the earth and make it back up. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's why I say the Lord can turn things around. Praise God. He can do whatever he wants to do. Never in the history, praise the Lord, except when uh, they were fighting the Canaanites in the battle of A and the Lord stopped the sun. Praise the Lord. He just made the earth stop. <laughs> but this time the Lord wanted Hezekiah to know, I heard you son and I'm going to turn it around. We face all kinds of problems, all kinds of situations. And sometimes the devil want us to collapse. So, but I'm not going to collapse. So, I'm going to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So, if Jesus can die on a cross, so, they can put him in a tomb. So, three days later, so, he walks out the tomb so, and declares all power. So, all power up in heaven and in earth up is in my hands. Up I know what the doctor said, up but Jesus up is the great physician. Up got all power up over sickness, up over disease, up over demons. Up Jesus Christ up can do it for you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. From a death sentence to an extended life. All of us had a death sentence on us. Hallelujah. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. And what did the Lord do? He turned it around. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we need you today to turn some things around, Lord. Turn it around, Lord. Turn it around, Lord. Touch by your power. Touch by your might. Touch by your authority. In the name of Jesus, turn it around, turn it around, turn it around. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I refuse to accept things that I know God can change. Hallelujah. He can change it. Did you hear what I said? He can change it. He can change it because he is God. Oh, praise the Lord. I want everybody to give the Lord a praise. I want everybody to give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You have to just put your faith in the word of God. Forget the doctor. Forget the people. Put your faith 
in Jesus Christ. I can remember about 35, 40 years ago, there was a woman. She had, she was an alcoholic and I guess they had warned her before to stop drinking and she didn't. Well, she fell into a coma. Praise the Lord. The head on, I believe, a, what is that? Respirator. But, said the Dorothy Jones, it was her cousin, and told me, said, would you go with me to pray for her? Praise the Lord. And I said, sure, sure, it's an opportunity. Pray for somebody, you know. We went up to the hospital, touched, I can't remember cousin's name, touched her arm. Her arm was ice cold. Praise the Lord. I'm thinking to myself, she must be dead already. And that machine just keeping her breathing. I'll tell you, we prayed for her. The Lord brought her out of the coma. Hallelujah. <laughs> Don't tell me what God can't do. He can do whatever he wants to do. Oh, thank you, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Will you stand to your feet and give the Lord another praise? He deserves our 